What is teching? In Smash, when you hit the ground after the tumble or hit stun state, you have the option to either lay on the floor and get yourself a nice tan, or do what's called a tech. A tech is performed by pressing the shield button either right before or as you touch the ground. This allows you to get up instantly instead of leaving yourself open for a decent amount of time. Well, there are a few vulnerable frames when you tech, but not as many as when you don't tech. You can move right or left as you tech if you so choose, by moving your control stick in the desired direction, or you can just tech in place. Now that we know what teching is, what is tech chasing? Tech chasing is a strategy that allows you to punish the opponent's tech option by either anticipating or reacting to whichever one they choose, then hitting them with a desired move. In Melee, tech chasing was a bit of a bigger deal, possibly due to the fact that so many characters had throws that forced tech situations, plus it was easier to memorize and react to the tech animations of all the good characters, since there weren't as many of them in that game. That's not to say it's impossible to tech chase in Ultimate, no, quite the contrary. You see top players do it all the time and it can seriously net you some nasty damage. So how do you get better at predicting the opponent's tech option. Can you ever react to what they go for? How do you optimize your tech chase game so you can get the most damage possible? All these questions and more will be answered after one revolution of planet Earth. Nice. Step 1. Force the opponent into a tech situation. Before you start a tech chase, it's important to know how to set one up. The best way to do this is usually by forcing a tech situation. Many characters have some sort of move that can send the opponent at an angle to make them either tech or lay on the ground. Examples include moves like Mario's Nair at around mid percents, Pikachu's down tilt at kill percents, and Ganon's side B across all percents. The lower a move sends the opponent into hit stun, the more likely that move will force them to tech. Make sure to go into training mode and figure out which attacks send your opponent low to the ground like this, and what percents they do it at so you'll know how to set up a tech chase. Keep in mind that, in training mode, just because the opponent hits the ground after your move lands, it doesn't necessarily mean it will force them to tech. They may still be able to jump out, attack, or air dodge if they're in the air for a long enough time. So to test whether the opponent will 100% be forced to tech, you can use two controllers. Use the move you wish to set up a tech chase with one controller, then buffer jump with the other, since jump comes out frame 1. If you can jump out, that means the move you used didn't quite guarantee a tech from the opponent, so try lowering their percent and going for it again. If they can't jump, good job! Now just get familiar with the general percent range your move sets up this situation at and you should be good to use it in real matches ASAP. Also, if you're in an actual match and you're pretty sure the opponent will be able to do an option since they were sent flying just outside the percent range of being forced to tech, you can still predict that option and punish. For example, if they'd like to land with a nair to avoid the tech situation, you can parry and punish that. If they jump out, you can chase their jump. And if they tech when they weren't forced to, you can still go for a tech chase. But for simplicity's sake, usually just aim to force them to tech. Step 2. Get into position. After sending the opponent into a tech situation, you're going to want to be in the correct position so you can cover as many of their options as possible. For most characters, this position is going to be right in front of the opponent. There are exceptions for some characters, like Samus can shoot a charge shot from tech roll in distance and cover a bunch of options, but in general, you usually want to at least start out next to them. When in doubt, go the route of being right next to them. Oh, please don't let me say that ever again. It's important to get into this position as fast as possible. If you're too slow, you may not be able to punish the option they choose. Unfortunately, some moves that set up tech situations have too much lag and won't allow you to get into position quickly enough to get a guaranteed punish on their option, so you can't really expect a tech chase with any of those attacks. The most prominent examples of these are smash attacks. Still, a lot of other moves are viable, like a good amount of tilts and aerials. To test out and make completely sure whether or not you can reach the opponent in time, you can use training mode. Set the speed to frame by frame. After sending the opponent into a tech situation, run up and get right next to them. As soon as these red sparks show, up, start counting the amount of frames they're on the ground by repeatedly releasing and pressing L. If you jab them within 25 frames after they hit the ground, you're definitely fast enough to do a jab lock, which means you'll most likely be able to cover miss tech, tech in place, tech roll in, and possibly tech roll away if your character has enough speed. Of course, you can always go with your gut feeling and won't need to do this for every single one of your moves, but you can never be too safe. If you use the rising aerial to set up a tech situation, make sure to drift towards the opponent as you throw it out, so you can be right next to them as soon as the animation is over. If you aerial in place or go back backwards, you likely won't be able to get to them in time. Now there are some situations where I'd say you wouldn't want to run right next to the opponent, such as if you're trying to hard punish tech roll in. In this case, simply stand within range to punish tech roll in, and hit them with whatever's within the realm of possibility like a charge smash attack or a combo starter. Still, only go for this if you're pretty sure that they'll tech roll in, since you'll miss out on the opportunity to cover any of the other options if that's what they decide to go for. Plus a lot of smash 
attacks can get punished if they whiff, especially if the opponent techs in place. Then, as I mentioned earlier, some characters might not need to be right next to the opponent after sending them into a tech situation due to their moveset. Generally, projectiles are some of the best moves for covering multiple options at once. Step 3. Punish their option. Now that you're probably beside the opponent and ready to start tech chasing, the next step is to follow their tech. Usually, you're gonna want to have at least a decent idea of what the opponent's gonna do if you intend on punishing their option, since it can be hard to react at times. So here are a few tips to help with the predicting process. Keep track of what the opponent did last time. If they teched away last time and you missed the punish, don't worry bruh. Just remember that they did it and punish the next time they're forced to tech. Same goes for whatever other option your opponent tends to favor. Now if the opponent realizes that you've been punishing their tech option a decent amount of times, it's likely they'll switch to something else to avoid it. Once this happens, simply adjust which option you punish. Again as an example, if you punish tech away the last two times, they might tech in the next time to throw you off guard. So you can either go for a read on this mix up by running into position preemptively, or try to punish them for it after they've already gotten away with it. In Smash, if you have a good feeling the opponent's gonna do a certain option, reacting to it becomes easier. Like if you think the opponent's going to tech in, you don't have to charge a smash attack at tech in distance a million seconds before they do it. You can simply run up to them, notice them tech rolling in, and punish on reaction, since your anticipation will have buffed your reaction time temporarily. I don't have any science to prove why this works, but I'd bet this pencil that it definitely does so you know I'm dead serious. This will prevent you from committing too hard and getting punished for trying to cover a certain option, assuming the opponent does something else. If they do, you'll be way more likely to be able to punish it. Try to react. It's generally agreed that most people's reaction time in Smash is about 18 frames or around a third of a second. After the 18 frames are up is when you'll be able to perform an action once something happens. This is faster than even the quickest tech option tech in place. Okay, I know, there definitely are a lot of factors that can make it harder to react, such as unexpectedness or confusing animations. But even if you don't reach perfection, becoming more familiar with the different tech animations is never a bad idea. To practice this, you can either play friendlies with real people and try to punish their techs on reaction, or have a friend do random tech options in training mode while you chase them. Unfortunately, you can't set the opponent to do random tech options in training mode, so you will need someone else to help you with this. I hear there's a mod that does let you set the opponent to do random techs, but I'd rather my Switch didn't destroy the whole world when Nintendo found out I was toying with my console. Still, the option's there. Cover multiple options at once. Gamer made a great video on abusing an ultimate specific mechanic to cover miss tech, tech in place, and tech away all at the same time. I won't bother going over everything he says in this video as plagiarism really isn't that pog, but be sure to check it out after this one if you're interested. It slaps. Besides that though, jabs are usually quite good at covering both tech in place and miss tech, especially since they set up for jab blocks if the opponent misses a tech, which we'll get into in a minute. Many down smashes are also great at covering tech in place, miss tech, and tech roll in, particularly the ones that go boom boom. <laughs> Other character-specific moves also serve the purpose of covering several options, like DK's down B and a lot of long-range projectiles. Now, when you punish the opponent's option, you're gonna want to try to make that punish guaranteed, so your attack doesn't end up getting shielded, spot-dodged, jumped over, or anything else. So be fast with your punish. Not too fast so that you hit them during their invincibility, but not too slow so they spot-dodge that grab you were super ready to land. This usually just takes practice, but I'll show the frame data of every tech option on screen in case that helps any of y'all out. One way to bypass having to time your move perfectly is by using a long-lasting hitbox during the opponent's tech animation, such as a rapid jab or dash attack. This will ensure that you hit them right as their invincibility ends. Step 4. Learn Optimal Punishes After you've gotten comfortable keeping track of the opponent's tech options and hitting them quickly enough, a great next step to take is learning how to optimize your punishes. Instead of punishing tech roll in with a simple jab, punishing optimally will allow you to get huge 40% combos just because the opponent did the option you were expecting. Here are a few examples of suboptimal versus relatively optimal punishes on different tech options. Feel free to brainstorm optimal punishes for your character and test them out against different opponents to see how effective they are. Remember, both tech rolls have 20 frames of vulnerability, tech in place has 6, and miss tech has 25. So try to make your combo starter fit within that window. Besides using a combo starter after the opponent techs, you can also start another tech situation. This will let you keep up the chase for even longer. A good deal of characters can't get much damage if the opponent techs away, but for the amount of stage control you get when the opponent chooses that option, even if you don't cover it, I'd say it's fine. Stage control is really important, plus you'll usually be 
be able to at least get a dash attack or dash grab if you're fast enough. And if you're not, your projectile might be fast enough if you have one. If you're still not fast enough for whatever reason, either take the stage control or try to punish what the opponent does after they tech. If the opponent misses their tech, you can do something called a jab block. This will allow you to hit them with almost anything you want if you do it right. To execute it, simply use a weak move like a jab shortly after they touch the ground, 25 frames to be exact, go for a second jab if you want right after, then use an attack of your choice within 38 frames. I'd recommend a smash attack or combo starter depending on their percent. A nice thing about jab blocks besides the great damage they can net you is that even if you miss and the opponent techs, you might still be able to follow their tech option and punish, especially if you practice your reactions as previously mentioned. Now punishing optimally will likely force you to cover fewer options at once. Like let's be real, this Falco Dare is only going to cover tech roll in. So you'll have to decide whether you want to cover multiple options suboptimally or one or two options optimally. My best advice is that the more confident you are that the opponent will do a certain option, the more you'll want to lean towards an optimal punish, then obviously vice versa. Step 5. Punish what the opponent does after their tech. If you can't punish the opponent's tech option for whatever reason, it's not the end of the world. You may still be able to punish what they do after it, as long as you keep track of the option they tend to go for. I found that a very large amount of people will spot dodge. Not everyone will, but it is pretty common. Another thing they might do is avoid the move your character is most likely to go for. For example, someone might spot dodge a lot more against a Charizard, a character with a very good grab, than a ZSS who has a slow and risky grab. Still, this isn't the case 100% of the time, so remember to always pay attention to your specific opponent's favorite options. Doing the same option consistently after a tech or getup animation is quite a common habit in this game, so make sure to take full advantage of it. Now, you don't want to depend on punishing the opponent's option after a tech, since it's way easier to just settle for a guaranteed punish on the tech option itself, but it's not a bad plan B. In summary, remember to learn and use moves that force the opponent into a tech situation, get into the best position to punish their option, which is usually right beside the opponent, punish their tech option or multiple options at once if possible, get good at all the previous steps, then start applying optimal punishes, then keep track of what the opponent does after their tech, just in case. And that's about it. Glug glug glug. G Fuel. What is this stuff? G Fuel is an energy drink that boosts your focus and alertness, all with no sugar and just 15 calories. I've been drinking G Fuel a lot lately to help me focus in school, and it's genuinely been keeping me more concentrated, especially when I don't get enough sleep, like every day. There are a ton of different flavors to choose from, and if you don't know which one to go with, there are these cool packs that let you try a bunch of them. Anyway, the containers for G Fuel are quite large, containing 40 servings each. Because of how much they have in them, G Fuel ends up being cheaper than your average energy drink. Also, don't worry, making it is extremely easy. You you just pour water into your shaker, use that scooper that comes with your flavor to put your flavor in the shaker, then shake the shaker. Anyway, if you guys want to try G Fuel, you can do so by clicking the link in the description, getting the most POG flavor, and using code BANANABOY at checkout. It's also a great way to support the channel. That's about it for today. I got pretty busy with exams recently, and admittedly also got kind of lazy with the channel in the process, which is why this video is a little late, but I really want to do better. So if I don't upload within the next two weeks, I'll be changing my profile picture to Carpet Yoshi for a month. You guys can hold me to this. Alright? Alright, see you all soon.